there's a secret to happiness that almost nobody knows. And I'm going to tell you what it is. It has to do not with getting everything you want, not with having perfect relationships, not even with having perfect health. Although all of these things are very good in supporting the thing that does lead to your ultimate happiness and fulfillment. Your real happiness depends on you discovering and using your gifts. And these are the things that you happen to be, maybe you're good at them already, maybe you're not there yet, but these are the gifts and talents that you have that are given to you for the purpose and benefit of serving the world. I'm Anna Runkle, also known as the Crappy Childhood Fairy, and I teach people how to notice and heal the symptoms of childhood trauma, including abuse and neglect. And the reason we heal from childhood trauma isn't just to feel better. We do need to feel better, but we ultimately, we need to become our real selves. And becoming our real selves is the doorway through which this fulfillment and happiness actually can happen. And it's when you are bringing your gifts into the world. And so today I have a letter from someone named May who is experiencing paralysis and disconnection from people. And I think her situation is very similar to what a lot of people are going through right now. So I'm going to read it to you because I, th I think her letter can help you too. May says, Hi Anna, I'm struggling badly with low motivation to do at least some of the things that will help the CPTSD. Hello, a lot of people have that. I got this diagnosis over two years ago after decades of thinking it was depression and anxiety and lots of other issues. Learning about CPTSD has helped me to understand what's going on with me and that alone has helped me feel a little bit better. However, I have been unable to move to the next stage and do something about it. I'm definitely a freeze type. Freeze, I think she's referring to the um, fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. Those are the four things. And, and Pete Walker is uh, the person who advocates looking at it as four things. Fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. Those are trauma reactions. I experience chronic loneliness, which seems to cause a lot of depression, but I don't think I have clinical depression any longer as I can feel a lot better when I have face-to-face -face contact with people. Aha, good clue. Connecting with people is helping your happiness. I have had a deterioration since the start of the pandemic when we had to start working from home. Yes, you and me and a lot of us, it's hard. I'm now spending most of my time alone and feel I am in survival mode. I'm finding it hard to get out of the house, especially this winter, to cook, exercise, etc. I now know what I need to do to help myself, but I just can't do anything except survive each day, trying to cope with work. I don't know how to create good routines and habits while I'm finding life so lonely and hard. I hope you can help with this question. I relate so much to almost all of your videos, but I'm finding it impossible to get started with healing. So May, I'm so glad you wrote this. I think that this is going around big time <laughs> in the world <laughs> and the lack of motivation. I mean, it, you don't need a pandemic to be suffering with the lack of motivation. It's common. Living in a time in history when survival isn't the immediate threat usually for most people. I know when you say you're just in survival mode, you mean just getting through the day. I remember times when I had minimum wage jobs and I was living in this tiny crappy apartment and sharing a room and just barely getting by and I had one coat and one pair of shoes. And you know what? I was never depressed back then. I think that the purpose of trying to get enough money to get by and just you know be able to make French toast for dinner and have some coffee in the morning, like just achieving that, was keeping me happy actually, keeping me motivated. And so the irony is that when we have choices and when we have leisure time and we have this thing called the internet that's just so full of fun possibilities and entertainments and fake ways of connecting with other people, we can slide way down into, into a loss of connection and a loss of motivation. So I'm gonna give you a hypothesis. You said that that, that when you do connect with people, it does lift your spirits. So you, you indicate you have a history of clinical depression, but it sounds like what you're suffering from is a lack of connection. And I realize that even as we come towards the end of this pandemic, please let this be the end very soon this year. But as we come to the end, we've gotten rusty with connecting with people those of us who had trouble connecting with people anyway, maybe to, retreated a little too far away from others, and now we gotta come back. And 
I'm one of those people, I love people when I love them, but when they're hard for me, I just like kind of can't deal with them at all. I relate to that. I'm just a really typical person with CPTSD and people are triggering for me. And so the pandemic gave me the luxury of days on end of not having to deal with anybody except the two people who live in the house with me. And even then, you know, it's like this incredible emotional intensity, especially at the early part of lockdown when that was all there was. I have tons of Zoom meetings every day. Uh, many of us do, but they're no substitute for connecting with people in a real way. And I think this has been a really hard period of time on a lot of fronts. There's been a lot of division. A lot of people aren't speaking to each other. A lot of people are disillusioned and scared. There's all this financial difficulty. People feel like they can't express themselves um, in the forums that we have because people are getting canceled. And so there's this big negative shift going on. And there's a lot working against our reconnecting with each other. So what I'm going to suggest to you is that you work, you just take all your energy and you work against that disconnection and you reconnect. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of this that the key to happiness is finding what your gifts are and using them. And believe me, most people don't know what they are just right off the bat. They're not just, you know, we're not given a golden tablet about it. We discover them through taking little actions. And so this for you might be going out and getting a cup of coffee. Sometimes, some days that's a big step, right? Just going out and get a cup of coffee or a cup of tea somewhere and go sit on a bench somewhere and have it and smile at people, all right? For some people, it might be a little more than that. You might call a relative who you haven't talked to in a while or an old friend who you owe a phone call to. You could call them. You're gonna think to yourself, well, how about if I reorganize the closet? You know, organized closets are great, but they're not gonna keep you company in your old age. So what I'm exhorting you to do here is to go connect for real with people in a way that, at a higher level than you have. Now, if you're triggered by people, that's gonna mean probably titrating a little bit. Titrating means doing a little at a time, a little at a time, a little at a time. And um, I don't know, maybe, maybe you're very good at connecting with people and you're just avoiding it for some reason. But if you get triggered by people, to work with your own triggers and start to toughen them up and get some muscles, get some resilience muscles that help you be able to keep connecting with people even when you're feeling triggered, is to start noticing your triggers, to start getting more neutral to them, and then to recover from them faster. So, so to do that, what I recommend to people is this titration. So let's say you go get that cup of coffee, you sit on a bench and you smile at people. Now go home, go lay down, go do the whole introvert thing as much as you want and make another plan for the, a little later in the day, you're gonna call somebody. The second day you do a little more, something that involves like a little more putting yourself out there and trying a little harder. Then go home, lay down, do your introvert thing and be so triggered. Now, it just wouldn't be a crappy childhood fairy if I didn't say, you know, you can learn to calm those triggers by using my daily practice. And I'm just going to say it over and over again. You can go learn these techniques. I always put links in the description section below every video. You can go down there and click on the link. It's a free course. You can learn and try the techniques in an hour and just see. It's a simple writing and then meditation technique that helps calm the triggers. You can sort of get them on paper and calm them down. And if you start doing this twice a day, like I recommend, you start to have less and less triggers and you're freer. You're less triggered and you can start to do deeper and more connected activities with people. I hate to say it, like there are times when I, my PTSD wants to believe that I don't need anybody. I don't need you, I don't need anybody. That's like, that's whenever I'm thinking that I know it's my CPTSD talking. I do need people and my healing can only happen in connection with other people. It involves a lot of alone time too. There's a lot of reflection that can happen, but the reflection by itself without the connection does not turn into healing. It's sort of like this, this like stone that starts rolling up the hill and then rolls back down, rolls up the hill and rolls back down. It's the connection with other people that gets that stone over the top of the hill that takes me over from working on myself to actually experiencing that grace of healing, that good feeling that comes that like, hey, this is easy for me now. I like it. So I'm after the good feeling and Regretfully, for introverts and people who get triggered by other people, it, it, it just requires other people. So anything that you're doing for your healing, I recommend that you just keep weaving in other people into the process in little bits, titrated, and then just see what happens to your motivation. 
I suspect that your motivation is drained because of the lack of meaningful connection that is preventing your gifts from having anywhere to go. Most people's gifts are designed for the benefit of other people and if they're not in your life, it's very hard to fulfill that. Um, my gifts probably have something to do with um, assisting others to heal. If you didn't come and watch my video, I would just be sitting here talking to myself. And can you see how that would not be very fulfilling for me? So I know that people are going to watch this video. I'm taping it all by myself, but I know you're going to be watching it. And so I feel connected to you and my gift has somewhere to go. And then you talk to me in the comments afterwards and I'm fulfilled. And I have that experience of, of like, of my life being for something and then I feel braver and then I feel a little more willing to do other things that, are, that take courage for me. And that's how it works. It's, it's a bunch of little steps of caring for ourselves, connecting with other people. It's disconnection, dysregulation, and self-defeating behavior. Those are the three things that the trauma manifests as, as that take us down. Where should you start? Anywhere you can. Just start anywhere you can. So if it's connection with people, just start there. If you can re-regulate yourself, like with the daily practice, start there. If you can tackle a self-defeating behavior like isolating, start there. So there's many ways you can come at it, but that's the general direction it goes in. May, thank you so much for contributing your true story for the service of others. That's a lovely thing you did for us. I hope you will get back to us. Let us know how it went. Let us know what you tried, what worked, what didn't work. And especially, I'm really interested to hear as things open up again in your world, how do you interact with that? How do you move forward with that and what happened? So if you like the subject of connection, here's a video that will go a little deeper into that. And I encourage you to have a look at that. And I will see you very soon.